if you need uh, to do the property management to make the deal a good deal, it just goes back to that's a red flag. And I think there's wisdom in understanding that we should caught, um, put it in and then you have to ask yourself, what am I worth? And early on, it's okay if you do the property management, um, but you do have to factor for that uh, because that we've just seen a lot of people devalue um, their, themselves and as a result, put them in a place where they can't grow. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. All right, everybody, we've been in this phenomenal series with Matt Four on the Better Wealth podcast on just real estate investing, looking at assets, looking at just real estate strategies, I would say. And now we're going to get into frequently asked questions. And what's so fun about this is it's just going to be random. We're just going to pick a couple questions and it's going to be great. And you might disagree, agree, but it's it's helping you uh, to get thinking. And so the three questions are, um, number one, how much do I need to put down? I'm assuming that that question as it relates to property. The, the second question of that is, should I use a property manager? And I would add to that the pros and cons of using a property manager. And then the third question is, should I invest in break even or should I um, you know, do it for cash flow? And because right now in some cities, it's it's almost impossible to get real estate and have it cash flow. So people are thinking like, oh, I'll get real estate and I'll just, um, because it's real estate always goes up, right, Matt? Yep. So first question, how much do I need to put down? Um, so it depends. And a lot of these are gonna be, it depends. But you can put as little down as 0%. You can put it down as much as 100%. What we typically see in the rental market is 25% down. Um, now, if you're going to do something like a house hack, you could take out an FHA loan and put down 3.5%. And all of a sudden, you're in a property for 3.5%, which is a beautiful strategy. But in an FHA loan and 3.5%, you have to live in the property. So for the most part, if you're out there, you want to get invested in single family rentals and things like that, you're going to have to put down 25%. On the syndication front, so we talk about multifamilies and investing in the skyscraper downtown and industrial properties and self-storage and things like that, syndicators usually range from fifty dollars to $100,000 minimum. And again, syndicators are where you're investing in a property through an operator. The operator found the deal, put together the deal, raised the capital, is as managing the property from a day to day, and then we'll be responsible for selling it. So they're doing all the work and you're just a limited partner. So again, if you're buying single family homes, 25% is general rule of thumb. And if you're doing real estate syndications, usually about 50 to 100,000. If I was to come to you and said, should I use a property manager? How would you answer that question? I'm gonna say yes. And the reason why is unless you are doing that full time, and I know we know some people that do that full time, it's probably not the best and highest use of your time. So if you think about it, states like California, places like Chicago and New York and things like that, there are so certain localized laws on how you interact with the tenant, where you put their money, where you put their safety deposit and all of that kind of stuff, where you put their deposit money. And ultimately, unless you're just reading the tax code and the laws every single day, there could be a law slipped in there that you didn't know about that all of a sudden you voided and you found yourself in a compromising position. Additionally, on top of that, like if you're not going to use a property manager, that's fine. Build it into your numbers, though, before you do the deal, I was gonna say. because I build in 10 percent for a property manager um, because I don't want a second job. And that's ultimately what you're doing when you property manager is you've just hired yourself to do a second job. Now, if you're just getting started in real estate and want to learn how to property manager, uh, be a property manager, then I would recommend it. But a good property manager is worth their weight in gold and they'll take away all the headaches. for Yeah, you. I'll, I'll just add to this. I think if you need uh, to do the property management to make the deal a good deal, it just goes back to that's a red flag. And I think there's wisdom in understanding that we should caught, um, put it in and then you have to ask yourself, what am I worth? And early on, it's okay if you do the property management, um, but you do have to factor for that. Uh, because that we've just seen a lot of people devalue um, their themselves and as a result put them in a place where they can't grow third question is break even uh, or make make more cash cash flow a month yeah so where this question really comes from is real estate prices have appreciated tremendously over the past 18 months and I've seen a return of buying spec homes and what that means is we know that a builder is coming in 
they bought the lots, they've developed the community plan and things like that. And you can put a deposit on that house and you know that the next eight months to nine months, they're going to build that house. So you have an eight to nine month window and you're hoping that the value of the property will appreciate and that you'll be able to sell the property. Uh, obviously by me explaining that you understand that that's a pretty risky strategy that the property value could go down and all of a sudden now you have to figure out what to do with the home. I've also heard the comment from newbie investors that, Hey, if I can find a tenant that would just pay the mortgage, then I'll be coming out ahead because the property will appreciate. I personally think from an appreciation standpoint, there are much better investment vehicles out there than real estate. If you're just playing pure, pure appreciation play. And also you're not thinking about. There's going to be repairs that happen. The, the lawn needs to be cut. The HVAC will need to be replaced at some point and things like that. And if you're not building that into your numbers, then all of a sudden when those, when those instances happen, you're going to be negative for that month on the property. So I go, rule number one for me in investing in real estate is to invest for the cash flow first and the appreciation and the tax benefits and the leverage is all great, but it's second. So always invest in property knowing that you're going to get investment of uh, cash flow. I don't have anything to add. That was well, well stated. Uh, thank you for the questions. If you want to ask more, make sure to comment below. Like we want to hear from you and, and we're going to keep this series going. Uh, and if you want to learn more, go check out Ice Cream with Investors. Matt is the host of that podcast. And we are, I'm really excited to just be in the series with you because we get a lot of people in the Better Wealth Nation wanting to have more questions about or about real estate and this series is offering you just that. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.